What's up everybody? Hope you're doing good today. Mr. E here. Just got um, back from taking the little one to the park and everything and wanted to jump in here, do something kind of new. Um, some music review of the uh, homies uh, America's Most Haunted. Um, after my last video, um, the homie Enraged from uh, AMH hit me up and we've been kind of just bullshitting and chatting and um, kind of connecting. Been trying to do a better job of like connecting with other artists and stuff because I feel like at the beginning of my career I never really did anything like that. And um, you know, sometimes the competitive MC in me kind of led me to not want to collaborate as much. And um, but I'm trying to kind of change that and everything. So um, anyway, Enraged hit me up and he was showing me some of his music and he was like, oh man, you know, it'd be kind of cool if you did like a review of the album, let me know what you think about it. So that's kind of what I'm doing right now for you. Um, I think I'm going to start doing more of these. I mean, like I said, ever since I was uh, bigging up Kaleidoscope and stuff, you know, I got all kinds of music that I feel like needs to get its shine and um, proper respect and everything like that. So I think I'm going to do a couple more of these videos, um, you know, in the future and everything like that. I got a lot of stuff on the plate. Um, but um, shout out to Enraged because he was the one that kind of like put this all in motion for me and everything like that. Um, I'm not going to do with the reviews. I, I kind of decided that I probably wouldn't like grade them or anything like that. Um, I think opinions are kind of bullshit. You know what I mean? So I don't want to negatively, you know, you know, if I don't like something, then that doesn't mean someone else might not like it. So why, you know, deter other people from liking it just based off my opinion, you know? So, um, if I do these music reviews in the future, it's really just going to be what I liked from the albums and everything like that. If I think they're dope. I mean, if they weren't dope, I wouldn't be doing the damn review anyway. I'm definitely not going to take the time out just to be spitting some negative fucking shit about people's music and shit, you know. So, um, yeah. So, yeah, be looking out for more of these in the future. Um, shout out to Scythe Note Records. Um, you know, it's funny. In the last video, I forgot to put this, but uh, this is Demented Nature on my wall there that I have uh, a flyer from from the 20th gathering and um, I should have showed love on that the last time oh, I got a little ash there but yeah just wanted to say shout outs to them shout outs to all Scythe Note um, that's the label that uh, America's Most Haunted is on they also house 2HK um, and Demented Nature obviously and uh, yeah, I've been messing with those boys for a long time, so it's good to kind of connect and just show love where I think it needs to be shown. Now, kind of a funny thing, I'll give you a little bit of a backstory here, is um, America's Most Haunted, I've actually done some shows with them back in the day, and like I said, never really met them or really talked to any of them until recently, um, but... We were always kind of running in like the same circles without being in the same circle type of a thing, you know what I mean? Um, they represent from like Sacramento to like Placerville, from like 916 to 530. And um, when I was living over there in California, that's where I was at. Was Sacramento. Uh, first I was in Tahoe, which is 530, and then I moved down to Sacramento. So I had been seeing them in the scene for a long time. Um, I've seen them at the boardwalk. I've uh, played with them there. I've played, um, well, I never played with them at Ace of Spades, but I've seen them live at Ace of Spades. If you're in that area, um, there's a good chance that you've seen these guys rock. Um, uh, America's Most Haunted is uh, spelled with all Z's instead of S's in there. So if you want to go look their music, look up their music, um, you could find them on their page there. And I'll try to put some link. Try to remember at least to put some links down here in the comments so you guys can go peep their music and everything like that. Um, but yeah, America's Most Haunted, AMH. Um, it's Enraged, The Ghost Freak, uh, Spliff the Re uh, Reaper, and uh, Hella Wicked the Beast. That's the three of them. Um, I think when I first was, I think when I first was introduced to them, it was just two of them. But um, and I'm actually not exactly sure who the 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 newest member is, but I don't want to say newest because I mean, that was 10 years ago when I was just seeing the two of them, you know what I mean? So I don't want to make it sound like it was a new guy or nothing like that. But, uh, yeah. Um, they do a mix of like 
really, really like like death metal, like meets rap um, type of a thing. Really dope uh, live show. I do remember that. Um, they've evolved from when I've seen them last. Um, they still do. They you'll, you'll see their aesthetic when when you go look at their stuff. But um, it's really cool to see how they've evolved, and uh, really glad that Enraged hit me up because. Again, like it was just, I made that last video. I actually had a, quite a few people um, hit me up from uh, that last video. And I was really happy with uh, how many people did, you know, touch base with me and stuff. Uh, uh, shout out to the homie Scribble. Um, he hit me up too. I think he messes with, I haven't really got too much backstory, but I just listened to his uh, newest um, tape and um, it was really fucking good. So well, maybe I'll do a review of that as well. Um, I believe he used to do the podcast with Mad Max, um, but uh, so that's his homie or whatever, from my understanding. And um, but that was another person that hit me up, so maybe I'll do a review of his next. Um, I got a couple other people's that I want to do reviews. Um, I need to listen to the King in Yellow from uh, Doc Gruesome. Um, I haven't listened to it yet. But I want to, maybe maybe I'll even do it live or something like that so I can do that. So there's a lot of stuff on my plate that I want to do music reviews of. Um, yeah, so let's kind of get into it. Uh, like I said, AMH, Sacramento area, Placerville area. This is the three of them. Um, Enraged hit me up. We've been bullshitting like every couple of days here. It's been really cool just to connect with people and stuff. Um, and I really just thought that they would get their, they should get their shine and stuff. So... I listened to um, their last album, um, Undead Kings, and it was really fucking dope. Production on it was like incredible. Lyrics, great. Um, I got some notes and everything written here, so if you see me going towards the phone there, it's just because I'm trying to make sure that I, I give all this stuff, so... Um, yeah, so the three of them, um, their album, and, I don't, and I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that they do a lot of their um, production through uh, Grady Finch Productions. Um, he does like a lot of work with Twisted, Blaze, Boondocks, Young Wicked, Kid Crusher, Oh the Horrible, uh, or Oh the Horror, excuse me, <laughs> Oh the Horror, um, and kind of in that camp and everything like that. Great production on the album. Um, and Rage actually does a lot of the um, production on the album as well, um, and in their music in general. Um, yeah, it was really good. Um, I got some notes here that I wanted to take just in case you take this and you want to go listen to this and I'll, and I'll kind of just, you know, um, spit some stuff about this. Um, so yeah, Undead Kings, um, it starts off with a really cool intro to set the pace. Um, it kind of goes into the folklore of, uh, what AMH is and everything like that. It kind of gives you like, um, you know, kind of like where they set this album in particular and uh it's really cool really really liked how it kind of like reminded me of like some old twisted stuff or something like that where it almost tells like a story you know throughout the whole album and everything like that it gives you kind of a little bit of like not backstory as to specific who they are as artists but um how their monikers are and everything like that um Starts off with just kind of them talking, it's more storytelling. Um, the second track is is like an interlude, I believe. It's just uh, there's really no vocals on there, but I think it just helps to like set the album. I don't know if they did that to um, not just have one long ass song, you know, and they had it like split into a second song. So when you go to track two, um, it's just really an instrumental. But again, it helps to set the pace and the tone of the album. I really liked it. Um, so the first track that you're actually hearing the guys on is, um, uh, the title track, Undead Kings. Um, again, like, I can't stress this enough, the production through this whole album. I have a bad time listening to, like, underground rappers a lot of the time, or, like, artists, well, I don't even say rappers, just artists a lot of the time, because if it sounds like, I mean, I always respect anyone that's going to do their music regardless by any means, um, but it, it helps my ears a lot to like digest the music. If you got good production, if you're mastering your tracks and everything, and this stuff sounds like a, it's just a great album as far as how it sounds sonically and everything like that. Um, again, um, 
it's more the track is kind of based on introducing AMH, kind of like a we're here type of a track. Um, really hard, really dope. Um, um, a great mix. The first track goes off and gives you like a great mix of their sound uh, for the whole album. And I think in general is everything. Again, it's like metal and rap. Um, I mean, and the guy, I, I believe in Raged, I could be wrong about this, but I'm pretty sure, well, I know he does some of like the really big screaming on there and everything. He told me about one of the tracks on here that, um, I think it's the last track he was telling me that he even, he, he was, it was so aggressive that it actually made his throat bleed at one time. But I mean, it doesn't sound like he's just like obnoxiously screaming. He could really do like a good, like a good roar, growling, like scream. So, um. Yeah, it's really dope. Um, that's the third track. Again, it's called Undead Kings. Um, let's see here. The fourth track on the record, um, Fighting Words. Um, it almost, it's like reminiscent of the first track, except in less, it's, it's less talking about like, it's less of an introduction and um, it's a lot harder. I thought it was hitting a lot harder as far as like, not like, a better song or anything like that, but it's just like a lot heavier of a song, you know what I mean? Um, I really like that track. Um, track five, um, Unstoppable. This song was, it's actually, it's not the favorite I have. I'm going to, this is probably, if I have to do top three, it's definitely top three tracks, Unstoppable. Um, it's still hard and it's still in the vein of how AMH does their music, but it actually just with the chorus and um, um, just with the chorus and like how the beat sounds, it sounds like there's like some Cottonmouth Kings influence to it. It's got a little bit more of a bounce than the other records that you've heard so far on the album. I wish my computer had, I don't have Wi-Fi out here, otherwise I'd probably be playing some records as we go on and everything to give you a taste, you know what I mean? So just... Take my word from it, uh, for it, and just go listen to this album, and you can kind of use my this video as like reference as to what songs I really enjoyed of it. But yeah, Unstoppable, that was the first song that I was like, okay, when I was when I went went down in a row, that was like this is my favorite song. Later, it gets replaced by these other couple of songs, but it's definitely top three. Um, they do like a back and forth between the three of them. I don't know, I'd have to listen to it again, but it's like, I think they're doing like eights, eights, and eights. It's not just like uh, Enraged gets the verse and the rest of the guys get their version of it. It's like they're kind of popping in like this. Um, really cool fucking deal. Um, that, at, when I was listening to it at first, that was kind of the, like, the hook that got me as far as like, it, it, it got me to be like really excited for the rest of the album. Um, so yeah, Unstoppable, top three tracks on the record for, for what I think. Um, uh, track six is featuring their label mates 2HK. Um, you've heard me talk about them before. Shout outs to them. Um, the track's called Ink. Um, and it was funny because I was like, oh, yeah, Unstoppable is my favorite record. And then as soon as it got into Ink, I was like, oh, man, not only was it just because I'm hearing, hearing familiar artist 2HK on there, but the production again, I'm going to probably be touch, touching base about that a lot because it was just so, it's so good. Um, it was, it's like a, it's like the closest thing that they got to like a whole posse cut on there. Um, so it's all of AMH and 2HK doing their thing on there. It was going crazy. Um, also, this is one of the tracks that has a video for it. There's a couple of them on here, but this one has a video. So make sure you go to the America's Most Haunted um youtube and watch that really dope video highly recommend it all their stuff is like really high production you know what i mean again like i'm not gonna hate on artists if they don't have the highest value of content you know i feel like you should always just do what you can and everyone's got to start somewhere but um, you could tell it's very professional from what they do and uh, their music just it follows suit with like how good their music sounds and everything like that um so go check that out again the track's called ink kind of a posse cut. Um, I really fucking enjoyed it. Um, track seven is Callist. Um, I'm noticing that they're spelling a lot of their stuff with Z's instead of S's and everything like that, which is dope. But uh, Callist is uh, uh, spelt with a Z instead of an S if you're looking up for it individually. But like I said, I always recommend that you just go listen to the whole album. 
Um, and especially in order. That That's another thing is the way I'm really particular about that. And I think in the day and age of music right now, a lot of people are kind of doing more of the singles thing and like people have backed away from doing like albums, you know, but my, some of my favorite albums are front to back listens. And this is definitely one that I highly recommend that if you're going to listen to it, listen to it, start to finish. Um, I'm really particular how, when I do my own music, um, for instance, this E and J record that, um, I've been working on, I've given you kind of taste, um, Jack Lantern and sleep forever that we've released so far, me and Yami. Um, we have a lot for this album and we were very particular in what order all these songs go in. And I feel like these guys did the same. So it's just got a good flow. Um, there are different sounds on it. All, not all the, the songs sound the same, but in the manner in which they put all the records is really great. I really appreciate that about artists. I feel like not enough people do it. Um, it's got a really heavy chorus. I mean, like I said, you're going to hear a lot of that heavy sound on there. But they do a good job of, they might have like the chorus in this instance really heavy, but the rapping on there, it's got a good contrast. It's got a really good contrast. And uh, they got some like good chop and flow between the three of them on there. Um, really dope. Again, this is another track that has a music video. So go to the uh, AMH uh, YouTube. I'll try to find the link and throw it in here because um, there's a, there's a, a video for this record as well. So that, that was really dope. Um, let's see here. Um, so yeah, my favorites so far are unstoppable and ink. Um, but I don't want to take away from these other tracks that they were, they were really good. Um, track eight is a uh, sleepless, um, super dope, big, big, like anthony type of a track. Like, um, the chorus is really big. The way they did all their music, the music on there, that like, um, I'm not sure who's, I, I don't know if it's um, the producer that's making their beats as well or where they're grabbing all their beats. I think Enrage told me, but um, I forgot to throw it in the notes, but all their music is really good. And this is like really, really big. I really like a big record. Like um, if you listen to the Joker, he's got like a lot of big um like symphony type tracks where it's like you're hearing a lot of stuff it's making a big sound it's not just like obnoxious big and loud it's like the whole record is i can only imagine this song live like it would probably be ridiculous live and i and for all i know i've i've heard the song live but this record came out in 2022 so now that i think about it i don't think i've seen them since then so there's no way i've seen this live but i can only imagine this song live is like is ridiculous so sleepless track eight on there um, and actually, I think I might've messed up. Where is it at? Let's see here. I, yeah, I think I did actually goof up here. One second. I'm going to go back out of here really quick. Yeah. Yes, so I, I did forget to put the note on there, um, but Sleepless is like my favorite track as well, so that I forgot to put on there. I, I remember when it was being Anthem, I was like, there's another song. That Sleepless track is like definitely my favorite track on the record, um, so just to go back one, Sleepless, that's, that's definitely my highly recommended my number one al um, song on the album. That's that's incredible. I really just like big anthem tracks like that. Um, also, the outro, the way they were do like, not only are you just getting this big, big energy through the whole song, but then it has like the outro is like it has like a lull before it comes back in, and it's just it's really nice how they did it. I really I really enjoyed it. Um, so sleepless is uh, track number eight. That's my favorite track on the on the album. Um, Um, track nine, and it's almost getting to the end of uh, the second to last track of the record. Uh, Apocalypse featuring Oh the Horror. Um, I'm not exactly sure if they're still signed to Magic Ninja or not, and I believe they come out of Sacramento as well. I don't really know a lot about them. I've only heard, I've only seen a little bit of stuff when they were like first getting with uh, Magic Ninja. Um, I really like their aesthetic. 
Um, so, but it was a great song for them to collab on because they have like not similar sounds, like they sound like each other, but they mesh well together. Um, I believe Oh the Horrors only on the chorus, on the hook, and um, the the verses is the AMH, and again they're kind of going to their chop and flow. They they do the chopping really well as far as they can go in and out of it, and there's not really a lot of like cheating. And what I mean by cheating is like like a lot of like you know untalented artists would be like on the chop and they'd be like, I'm slipping and tripping and ripping and bit bit you know what I mean? It's like they're not really saying anything, but they're just saying words fast. But these guys have a lot of substance in their chop, which I really appreciate. Someone that actually from someone that actually does that type of music as well. Um I'm a little bit harder on it. Um so they're able to go in and out. Really like that. Again, this song has uh, a video as well. Go check that out. Um it's going to be on their YouTube and everything like that. Um, this was one of the ones I actually didn't watch yet, but uh, I'm probably going to go and watch it right after this and, and check it out. Um, yeah, I thought it was really dope. And you could tell that, oh, the horror is on the hook, but you could also hear uh, AMH in the background. And so you're kind of getting this cool duet of the two sounds at the same time. Um, I really, really enjoyed it. Um and again, like I liked a lot of uh, the, the top three songs are my favorite, but there was never really a point in the album that I was listening to it and being like, fuck, I wish I could skip this. You know what I mean? Um, which is really saying something. And I think playing that in order, the, the album in order helps with that too. It gives you kind of context to the next track and the next track. Um, sometimes when you're hearing a record just solo by itself, it takes a little bit of the magic away because you're not in the ride. Um, and Rage was even calling it like a roller coaster. And I, and I, and I highly agree with that. Um, so I'm not huge fans of Oh the Horror, but it was dope that what I did hear on there, it definitely added to the track. Because that's the other thing is sometimes you get like a collab. It doesn't really necessarily add to your track. Sometimes artists do it because they're trying to get like the clout or like the streams from having like a big name on here. Sometimes they don't mit, they don't mesh well, or it sounds like the artist is doing their version of the song for the verse, like what you would do with the instrumental, and the song isn't like cohesive. Um, but that's not the case with uh, track number nine, Apocalypse, featuring Oh the Horror. Um, the last song on the record is uh, Inner Controversy. Um, one word spelt with the Z instead of an S. Um, it's, they start, they have, not only do they do like, uh, screaming and stuff like that on there, but they do have good vocals. And I think as far as singing, this is the best track of them doing singing on the, the record. And it's also like a great, like end to the album. Um, as far as the roller coaster, it's a lot more, um, like it's more of like a self-aware song. It's more of like inner monologue type of a deal where it's like this big, by the time you get to the end of the album, it's still an aggressive song, but it, you, you, you get lost in it. And I, and I really like that when you have songs that you can get lost in and everything like that. Um, the singing is really dope. It reminded me, and I know people, some people aren't big fans of like newer Slipknot, but I always have enjoyed the fact that Slipknot can go into just some crazy hella hard stuff and then have some like, um, like when Corey Taylor does like a stone sour, it's a little bit softer, more singy and everything like that. But I feel like a lot of Slipknot songs, they do a good job of like being really hard, but then he could actually do some like singing and vocals. And this is kind of reminiscent of some Slipknot, um, at times because it's really heavy and hard, but when they're doing the singing, it's, uh, it sounds well and it, or it sounds great. And again, it's not like they're trying to mix. They're already mixing metal and rap. So there is a lot of room for error if the song doesn't sound cohesive or like well put out. So, um, yeah, that is just, a. again, I wish I could have been playing some of the music for you and I'll try to get that done in the future when we are listening to music. So that way at least you could, I could have like highlight favorite parts and everything like that. Because right now you're just listening to me ramble and shit, but really good album. Cover art was really dope. Um, I really liked it. Go check it out. Um, 
go listen to their music, go follow them, um, follow all the people on Scythe Note. Those are um, good boys of mine and uh, really proud of them and everything like that. Really super stoked that they're doing what they're doing. Um, they got a really good crew over there. Um, really dope. So go listen to uh, America's Most Haunted. Um, they have, he sent me some new singles, uh, newer singles and stuff that may become an album or an EP or like a project later on, but they're just standalone right now. And, um, I was going to mention them in here and give the review as well, but I think I'm going to do a second video because I felt like the album kind of needed its own video and its own respect. Um, though... The singles show more of their growth from that, just from, you know, 2022. So like the last year or so, and they've kind of gone through a slight rebranding of like how they look and everything like that. Um, so I will probably do when I listen to those songs, I'll do it's another, another video, uh, but they will be on the available on their YouTube. So if you stumble into them, let me know what you think. And, uh, yeah, um, these are really fun for me. I, I like doing this shit. I like uh, reviewing the music. And uh, again, like I'm not really in the business to being like trying to grade it or anything. Um, I think most people's opinion are trash, including mine, as far as having opinions. You know, like what's the old saying? Like uh, they're like assholes. Everyone has one, you know. Uh, I'm not really in the business of trying to grade it. I just want to highlight the things that I liked about it. And if I'm doing these reviews, it's because I'm recommending it to people. And if the music was garbage, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be recommending it. I wouldn't even be doing the video. You know, if, 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 if you know, if, uh, if they sent me this music and I just didn't enjoy it at all, I probably wouldn't have did a video because I don't want to be up here capping or like lying and shit like that. You know what I mean? So um, I just want to highlight the things that I really liked about it. Um, but yeah, solid record all the way through. Um, definitely. Um, I think you get the best enjoyment if you're listening to it on some headphones and stuff, but it also plays as like some good background music where you background music in the sense that like you can have it playing and catch a vibe while you're maybe partying or doing something, you know, cleaning or something like that. You know what I mean? Um, people that are into really that like heavy sound, um, you're definitely going to enjoy this. Um, it also gives, uh, hip hop heads like a good feel because the rapping is really well and the, the lyrics are really good. You know what I mean? So, um, even if you're not into maybe that, I don't want to discourage you from not listening to it. Maybe it's something that you end up finding out that it's like a great combination of the two and you end up falling in love with like a new sound that you usually don't. Um, so again, I'll try to put on there, um, the info for them. Um, AMH, America's Most Haunted, Enraged, The uh, Ghost Freaks, Spliff the Reaper, uh, Hella Wicked the Beast, or he goes by Hella as well. Um, so Enraged, Spliff, and Hella Wicked, like, thank you guys. Um, hopefully that we work something soon. Um, definitely would be down to do something like that. Um, it's, but, but in general, it was just nice talking to Enraged and, it's nice when, you know, a lot of times, like, and like I was like this myself, like artists don't want to necessarily hit up someone else just because maybe they're timid or they don't want to seem like they're, you know, just trying to do something for the, like, they don't want to do it just because they don't want to seem like they're asking for a favor or do something. Um, so it kind of stops you from wanting to reach out to people. And I was really like that at the beginning of my career, but it was really dope and much love to fucking, uh, enraged because he hit me up and it was really cool. We had a long conversation. Like I said, we've been talking through the uh, last, like last week or something like that. Um, it's been really super dope. I've been sending up some of my music. He's been fucking doing reviews and stuff like that as well. Um, but yeah, undead Kings, um, go listen to it and, uh, I'll probably have another one of these videos, uh, in the future. So much love and, uh, let me know what you think. All right. Peace.